still time. <laughs> so th thank you for your epiphanies, uh, making known to us all that. I have a couple other epiphanies that have nothing to do with anything. Um, did you know, I just learned this, drinking water after eating reduces the acid in your mouth by 61%. No, no. Did anyone, was anyone able to work um, the fact that there's no um, J's in the periodic table into a conversation this week? Oh, no, huh? Well, I have good news for you. There is one individual who took it upon himself to tell everyone that he knew um, that there was no J in the periodic table. Um, and I won't mention my older brother by name because Ron would kill me. So, um, but he did, and he even has a friend named Jay. And he said, "You don't appear in the periodic table anywhere." And he was devastated. You know, just oh, anyway. So, all these epiphanies are, are for, for something or other. Um, oh yeah, uh, I decided to uh, that we were. We would, uh, since we moved, we'd get rid of our vacuum cleaner because all it was doing was collecting dust. And, okay. Um, oh, there's a lot. Of, what do you call a, a, a nervous javelin thrower? Shakespeare. Okay. Well, there's a lot of other. Oh, from the calendar. Uh, what do you call a T-Rex that's been beaten up? A T-Rex that was beaten up is a dinosaur. Uh, okay. Well, there's a lot of other uh, uh, epiphanies I can share with you, but uh, the better epiphany comes in our gospel lesson as our lessons continue to help us discover um, who Jesus is as Jesus is revealed as the Messiah, the beloved Son of God. And so please join me in our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it came to confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those who call us to love. Accept our repentance things we have not done. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Rejoice in the good news. In Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Blessed Lord God, you have called the Holy Scriptures to be written for the nourishment of your people. Grant that we may hear, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that comforted by your promises, we may embrace and forever hold fast to the hope of eternal life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the book of Nehemiah, the eighth chapter, and their scattered verses. All the people of Israel gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the book before the assembly. Both men and women and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people for he was standing above all the people, and when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites, who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way. Eat the fat and drink the sweet wine, and send portions of those of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Word of God, word of life. Be to God. Psalm 19 is in your bulletin. We'll read it responsively. You read the dark print, please. It makes you think when you look at the sunrises and sunsets. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day it tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands and their message to the ends of the world, where God has pitched a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the utmost edge of heaven and runs about to the end of it. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. 
By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own faults? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sin. Let them not get dominion over me. Then I shall be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Our second reading comes from 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, beginning with the 12th verse. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, that would, make it, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, that would, make it, would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need for you. Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need for you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor, and our less respectable members are treated with great respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God so arranged the body, giving greater honor to the inferior members, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice within it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, <clears throat> various kinds of tongues. Are there apostles? Are there prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. Thanks be to God, the word, word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel from Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee. And a report about him spread throughout all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, 
He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. We continue in the season of Epiphany as Jesus has revealed to us as the Messiah, the Son of God. We've just encountered the three historic epiphanies, but we hear them every Sunday in the words of the proper preface, the words that I speak at the altar just before we all sing the holy, holy, holy. We recount those three historic epiphanies of the visit to the, of the wise men, Jesus' baptism, and the wedding at Cana. And now our attention turns towards Jesus himself. And our lessons this morning help us to reflect, to understand what it means to be Epiphany people. People of the Epiphany, people proclaiming the Epiphany, people proclaiming that Jesus is indeed the Messiah, the Son of God, and telling that good news. Luke begins in his story of, of Jesus. He begins Jesus' ministry in the synagogue in his hometown. But just prior to this, Luke has told us about Jesus' baptism, and he has told us about his temptation in the wilderness, which we'll consider later on. But those two events were all centered around being led by the Spirit, by the Spirit of God. And so our text begins. Then Jesus filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and Jesus begins his ministry. He begins in his hometown declaring his mission statement. And his mission statement comes from the book of Isaiah. And it's a marvelous sense of what he's going to be about bringing good news to the poor, proclaiming release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and releasing those who are oppressed. Wow. And he sits down and he says to those who are gathered that that is his mission statement, that those words are now being fulfilled in his, by his very presence. That's what his ministry is gonna be about. And who could argue with that? Who's going to say, well, I think the poor should, um, should all get bad news. Yeah, I, I'd vote for that. Or I think the blind should stay blind. You see, it just doesn't, what Jesus is proposing, what Jesus is saying he's about to do, is hard, hard to argue about. We'll find a way, but that's next week. Uh, and it is next week's text. But revel in that marvelous sense of his mission. It's his mission that he will carry out in his lifetime. It's also the mission of the church and of you and I as being Epiphany people, of bringing good news to the poor, sight to the blind, release to the captives. I mean, it's hard, hard to argue with that. It's that same sense of the mission of God's compassion and love that we are to share that, that it drives us in all that we do. And in the same light, in our first lesson. Now listen closely to this one. Um, in our first lesson from Nehemiah, um, they have just been recovering from their own pandemic called the exile. Um, and the walls of Jerusalem have been rebuilt 
and now the people gather in celebration. And Ezra the priest was asked to bring the law of God to this celebration. Now, it's a Torah, and probably historically, um, most of the Pentateuch has been formulated by this time into uh, a unity. Um, and he starts to read from that at the request of the people. Six hours, they listen to that. And I got to thinking, well, you know, all these people gathered and they stood and they looked down to the ground and they listened for six hours. What are you guys doing until about four o'clock this afternoon? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's amazing because they read the law and, and the law of God, the Torah, is not just rules and regulations that we normally think of. It is a very story of God, the story of God's salvation, the story of God's care and compassion. Yeah, there's all kinds of laws in there, but it's a story about a God who loves his people. And the people after hearing this and having it interpreted to them, start to cry because they've taken it to heart. It's not just words that were being spoken and they nodded off, but it's words that they heard and took to heart. They consumed, that was part of them. And it brought them to tears. Why? Well, maybe because they realized how gracious God really was. Maybe they realized how they fall short of God's glory. Uh, whatever reason, they were, they were moved by the very reading of it. And Ezra is there to say, ah, hey folks, this is a holy day. Don't be sad, don't be mournful. Rejoice. I'm sure that was a hard sell at the time, but a word of encouragement that the joy that their joy is in the strength of the Lord, that it is indeed the very, the very care and concern of God, which is part and parcel of their very lives. You ready for six hours? No, I'm not either. Well, and so that kind of leads the sense that being people of the epiphany, being epiphany people, we too listen. We listen to the words of God. And we listen, and what effect does it have on us? Well, Paul, in our second lesson, then reminds us that we're not, we're not so different. We're all part of the same body. And he uses the imagery of the body in, in, in this marvelous sense of, you know, when was the last time you heard an, an eye talk or a hand talk or something like that? But, that we're all in this together. And it's not just a matter of, well, I like the foot, but I don't like my, my, the, the small toe on my right foot, so that's not part of me. Well, it's kind of crazy. And Paul, what Paul is saying, in the midst of Corinth, which is very divisive, and, and people are polarized and at each other's throats for all kinds of things, some of which are very unimportant. He says, hey, folks, we're in this all together. And all of us, are treasured. Even those that we don't necessarily think very highly of, they're important as well. And that marvelous sense that if one member suffers, we all suffer. Yeah, not just the ones that we like, not just the ones that we approve of, but all, all suffer when one suffers. Paul is reminding us that his epiphany people we are joined in Christ to all people. And encourages us to treat each other with that same respect. Our lessons this morning help us to understand the words that Jesus spoke. These marvelous words of bringing good news to the poor, proclaiming release to the captives, sight to the blind, and all those who are oppressed to go free. And they help us to revel in that, that that is indeed our vision. That is indeed our purpose. And this morning, to help us out, he comes to us in simple bread and simple wine, in Christ's body and blood, to encourage us by his very presence, to encourage us by the very reminder that we are free, that we are forgiven, 
that we are Epiphany people to proclaim God's grace and mercy to all people, regardless of their status or anything else. Epiphany people. Our prayer in this season of Epiphany is that God would continue to open our eyes, to see his presence all around, and the courage to proclaim his grace and mercy in all that we say and do. May God indeed give us a thousand tongues or more that in we might proclaim his grace and mercy for all. Thanks be to God. Amen. That's our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please rise. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You reveal yourself to us in the reading of scripture. Fulfill your word through the faithful witness of your church. Send us out to bring your liberating good news to all people. God of grace, Hear our prayer. All creation proclaims your handiwork. Teach us to love the intricate and beautiful bodies that you have created. Bless tiny insects, enormous whales, and every creature in between. Sustain species at risk of extinction. God of grace, hear our prayer. You desire that there be no dissension among us. Where we are divided in our society, nation, or world, come quickly to reunite us into one body. Ease conflict, dispel violence, and bring an end to war. God of grace, hear our prayer. Anoint with your spirit all who seek your favor. Grant provision and justice for people living in poverty, people living with disability, those living with pain, or those living under oppression. God of grace, hear our prayer. Build up the body of Christ in this place. Bless this variety of ministries in this congregation. Empower us to freely welcome and deeply value each person who enters into worship and ministry among us. God of grace, 
Hear our prayer. In thanksgiving, we lift before you the saints for whom the promise of salvation has now been fulfilled. Tend to those who mourn. Bring us together in your everlasting glory. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace to those around you. Peace be with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our calling and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of the star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, and it's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, and it's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, as we our sins. Deliver us from the kingdom, our power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Amen. Come to God's table. There is a place for you and enough for all. Come for all is ready.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood remain with us as we seek to take the message of love and grace into the world. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we, for we have, have feasted, feasted on the abundance of your house. Send, Send us, us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the, with richness, the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, God, who leads you into pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, may he bless you, your going out and your coming in from this time forth forever. to a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.